you guys expended so much energy, you know, getting back in it and tying things up in that fourth quarter. Do you feel like you kind of ran out of gas or, or, or kind of what happened in that last stretch? There might have been some of that, but uh, there were a lot of covered mistakes. Uh, we struggled offensively to execute and you know, get good looks, but uh, the coverage mistakes on the other end, were, those are inexcusable. You know, ball game is, is tight. I think a little over three, three and a half minutes to play, and they finish on 17 or 18 to, to four run. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it can't happen. You know, we're better than that. And I was proud of the way that we responded, you know, after getting down early, but uh, you know, we got to find a way to just tighten it up on both ends of the ball in, in crunch time. Um, when you when you speak of um, those coverages, is, is that primarily kind of um, against Giannis? Because you guys kind of, I mean, he put up some numbers, but at the same time, he was pretty contained for the most part. But it seemed like when it was 88, 88, I think he kind of like just started to put his head down and, and get to the rim a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's some of that, but um, I think it was a little bit everybody. I can't point to one person and say it was, you know, it was this situation. Um, but, you know, make subs come in uh, after timeouts. We all have to make sure we're locked in. Everybody's on the same page. There was some slippage there, or some miscommunications that, that wound up costing us. Yes. Anything you, any update on Beal, anything you've heard, and also Bryant's situation? I guess it looked like an ankle there. Yeah, he sprained, in, sprained an ankle. Um, but then we'll take a look at it and see what they, you know, what they think. Um, no, Brad was evaluated, and uh, then we'll reevaluate him in about a week. Um, so we'll see how that goes. He'll, he'll probably be out for the next three or four games, and then uh, we'll see, hopefully, uh, how it responds. Chris. Wes, can you just describe kind of just searching right now with the team struggling and then you're dealing with another injury with Bryant? Um, just kind of describe the, the, the mood of the group, just trying to find a way to get a win right now. Well, it's a challenge. I mean, you know, we have to kind of help build each other up. You know, no one likes to lose, and there's for sure a lot of pent up frustrations. Um, anytime things don't go well, but. Um, you know, I think it's it's one of those things where this is a test. I mean, we have to kind of go through the fire here a bit to get to the other side. And hopefully that we're, we're, we're gaining some traction and it doesn't necessarily play out in wins, but uh, that, that fight, that grit, uh, we've got to have it. And I think so, you know, we've shown that a little bit. I thought we did tonight, especially in the second half. But You know, with TB, Going down with that ankle, obviously, it'll be hard maybe for him to play tomorrow. Can you describe what you were able to get from Montrez tonight? Um, uh, you know, Trez was, was great. You know, it's, it's tough because, you know, they're switching lineups and it kind of negates the pick and rolls, but we could play through him in the post. Uh, we've seen that, you know, before, his ability to score in the post and uh, hit cutters. So it, it, that part was good for us. And I think, uh, you know, the size with Rui, Denny, um, you know, those two out there with Coos, who were able to switch quite a bit and for the most part contain Middleton and, uh, you know, Giannis is he's a tough cover for anybody. But I did like the size component, you know, the positional size we were able to throw out there. Josh? Wes, I think if I, I'm not sure if I heard you correctly, did, uh, but I believe you said that uh, the team had trouble executing its offense there down the stretch. What what did you see for the most part there in those sequences? Well, I think, you know, coming off, you know, out of timeout, we had a couple of plays that weren't executed correctly. Um, it just goes back to that miscommunication. You know, if we're not certain where we need to be, you know, I, I got to make sure guys understand it and they got to make sure they help each other out so we can get a, you know, a good look. Uh, it's a pivotal time in the game. We, we can't afford not to come away with something. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Wes, given the, that it's a back-to-back, -back, can you rule out Thomas at this point for tomorrow's game? Um, I'm not going to do that, but, you know, it, it was a significant sprain. So um, if I had to go with my gut, I would say he's probably out tomorrow. But, you know, there's always a chance, and I don't want to you know, we'll pass it right now. And um, I think you guys had seven turnovers in the second quarter. What, um, what kind of happened there is um, – as you guys were having trouble protecting the ball? 
I think a lot of those were unforced. Um, you know, it's just playing too fast, playing in crowds, uh, not where we should be spatially. You know, kind of all the things that we talked about. You know, this team really tries to speed you up and very aggressive and handsy. Uh, if, you're, if you play in a crowd, they're, they're going to take it. You know, so I was, it was good to see us respond. Second half, I think we only had two turnovers for three points. So kept that number down. I think that allowed us to, uh, you know, climb back into it, make it a ball game until those last four minutes. It also helped slow their fast break points. You know, I think they uh, had 12 or 14 early in the game about in the first half, and a few uh, in that second half. And, uh, you know, Spencer, he got uh, some shots to fall late, but what do you think for the first, like, I guess, two and a half quarters of the game was was uh, going on with him offensively? What was going on with everyone? You know, and they're, they're switching bothered us. We've seen that before where you know, the team switch, and we kind of stagnate. You know, I thought we got better as the game went, um, creating, you know, secondary actions, keeping the energy in the ball, you know, sprinting in, slipping out, opening up the floor and, and, and trying to get, you know, head of steam to, to attack. And when we did that, we generated some good looks. But the first quarter, quarter and a half, I thought we just kind of fell into that, stagnated quite a bit, and it didn't go well. Neil? Hey coach, I know you know you're not into moral victories, but is there anything that you can take positive out of here that you hope that can be reapplied tomorrow? Uh, I thought you know our, our competitive spirit was good. You know, we, our, we started slow, obviously, but um, the fact that we stayed with it, you know, kind of got ourselves together and pulled, you know, pulled together enough to make it make it a game. Um, that, that's a positive. You know, but to your point, moral victories don't do us a whole a whole lot of good right now. Um, you know, still things we can learn, uh, and we have to continue to, to you know, find ways to get better. When you say that, you know, there are miscommunications during the game, both on offense and defense, do you think that's a pro byproduct of, you know, just lapses, mental lapses in the moment of the game that you hope are just one-offs, or is it a common theme that you can sense? Uh, I don't know if it's a common theme uh, tonight. I'm hoping it's a one-off. Um, but we had too many of them in that stretch. So you know, there is a, you know, it's, a, it's a bit disappointing in that. But um, in general, you know, it's going to happen. You know, you're not going to play a perfect game. But, um, you know, in a crucial juncture of the game, you know, as we saw tonight, you know, you just can't have that many. Kind of what got started clicking there in that third quarter, you know, especially kind of during the end, you know, you seemed like you got a lot more aggressive and, and was able to kind of chip in with Kuz and help bring you guys back. Just curious. You know, um, what started working for you then? Um, not really, man. I just started getting touches, man, and then uh, just started, you know, attacking the basket, really. Um, you know, I thought they were – well, I know they were switching down the line, uh, one through five, and, you know, by the time the matchup came um, to me when they were trying to fix it, um, I mean, I just felt like I had a, you know, better matchup in the post um, and in the mid-post area. Um, it's something I worked on in my game all summer long, and, you know, I was just able to be able to find – um, a good groove, find the touches, and you know, just try to make sure I finish the whole team. It was in a tough stretch, it was in a tough game. Um, and try to you know, do everything I can and was about to get a win. That's it. You guys expended so much energy to kind of get back in it, and then it was hard to close out down this stretch. You know, what kind of played into that last stretch? Um, really, what you said, man, we, we exerted so much energy in the beginning, um, you know, down big. Um, you know, we hung around, hung around, but I mean, you know, these guys get paid to do the same exact thing uh, that we do. You know, they're a great team. They've been together for a while. You know, they've won an NBA championship. So um, we can't, you know, ease in the games and feel like we can just kind of, you know, take our time to kind of get things going and then, you know, feel like we can pick it up and play. You know, we got to be ready to play once the ball is going up and, you know, as soon as the jump ball happens. And just one last one for me. What's the, what's the vibe in the locker room right now? I know the wins aren't showing up, but are, are you guys staying in? Good enough spirits? Um, I mean, yeah, we got to, man. Because um, like I tell the guys all the time, like I tell them, you know, before we break the huddle, I'm the wild for the game, man. Nobody's going to feel bad for us, man. Nobody's going to, you know, stop, you know, treating us the way that you know. Nobody's going to stop coming at us. Nobody's going to stop playing, man. We're going to continue to beat our ass until we figure it out. Simple as that, man. And that's just the way that, you know, anybody should look at it. And that's the way that I would come in it, um, if I was on any other team in the NBA. You know, you just got to keep – Applying that pressure to them until they figure it out. And I told the guys that, you know, that's what's going to take. We got to figure it out. Nobody feeling bad for us. Nobody's going to say, oh, you know, they, you know, dealt with this, dealt with that. You know, everybody in the NBA is making adjustments, man. Everybody's going out through injuries, COVID, and everything, man. So 
we just got to figure it out. Simple as that, man. So, you know, I think the energy um, in the locker room is just to the point where, you know, that's what we're trying to do. You know, so it was that. But at the end of the day, like I said, we're going to have to do it together as a collective group. Cool. Appreciate you. Chris. Chris, can you describe the professionalism you guys have to have during this time of the year, knowing what's looming on February the 10th? Um, I mean, honestly, I don't even know what February the 10th is. Uh, so you just get through a date out there um, that, you know, somebody might need to inform me about. But I, I, I don't know. Um, honestly, like I said, man, uh, if you're looking at, you know, as far as that break comes, I guess that's what that is, the February the 10th mark. But if you're worried about that or looking, you know, hence to, to try to get to that, man, then you're in the wrong profession, man. Um, we got to go out and play. Uh, we got to go out and do our jobs and play the game to the end. Um, and that's every night. Um, we can't look ahead as, you know, to, you know, upcoming breaks that we have coming up or, you know, we can't look ahead at our schedule in general, man. We got to come in one game at a time, one night at a time, man, with a set plan on how to be able to take this team out of what they do good and win a basketball game, man. So, um, if that February 2 mark is the All Star break that you're speaking on, brother, I you just brought some news to my attention, I guess. But February 10th is the trade deadline. Oh, well, shit, see what I mean? I don't, I you brought something totally up to my uh, up to my attention, brother. Um, I mean, honestly, like I said, me as a player, I don't really worry about that. It's not really up to um, me to have to get into. Um, it's more so for my agent, and I think that's the same as that way that you know, every player in our locker room should be looking at it, man. Uh, you know, it's out of our control, it's out of our hands, man. Um, you know, they're going to do what they want to do as far as the organization goes, um, as far as the pieces that they want to move, but, and that's just that, man. So as far as if you're worrying about that or that's looming in the back of your mind, then, like I said, you, you worry about the wrong things, man, because whatever happened, that's going to happen. You, That's out of your control no matter what, man. So um, I hope nobody in our locker room is worried about that. I don't think nobody in our locker room is just worried about that. Um, but like I said, we still got to get to the point where we got to figure out what we need to do in order to get back on the winning track. So. Uh, one question about the game and the, the foul that they called on you, the flagrant one on Giannis. Um, you know, you, you play a certain way, but, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, that probably would have been looked at as just like a common foul. What it, was a common foul. it was a common foul. I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about the 80s and the 90s. I'm not talking about back then. That was a common foul. The only reason he fell the way he did is because he's coming down the lane with a lot of force and he was in front of me. I didn't hit him around the head. I didn't hit him around the neck and face area. I hit him on the arm, and he just went down to the ground hard, like I said, because he was going with that much momentum. So that's as much as I'm going to talk about it on that. I'm not about to get into the back and forth of, oh, he's a dirty player, or he does this, trying to take guys out. No, he drove down the lane. I was behind him. I was running to catch up the play. I went across his arm that he was laying the ball up with in discussion. How he fell is just from our trajectory and how fast he was running. That's all it was, man. So at the end of the day, it should have been another common foul. But once again, he has the statue and has that ability, uh, that ability and the name that comes with uh, the MVP status. And I understand that. I mean, I understand once I hit them that not so I said if I was going to give me a flavor. I didn't think it was a flavor. I don't think nobody else felt it was a flavor, but it is what it is, man. You move on to the next play, it's a nice little play. And that then changed the, you know, difference of the game. That wasn't the, the momentum swing of the game, man. Like I said, we waited too long to start playing defense early on, got down early, and then we didn't have enough juice to close it out. Simple as that. Thanks, Trez. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Trez. Um, you guys got the offense going in the second half. Uh, this season, when your guys' offense has been playing to its potential, what kind of leads to that? What is What needs to be there for you guys to play as well as you can on that end of the floor? Um, to be honest with you, brother, I can tell you, man. Um, you know, I'm more so focused on just going out trying to do all the little things and anything I can, you know, on my team, get that energy, that, you know, the extra will, that extra push to, you know, get us over the edge to, you know, be able to win a basketball game. As far as, you know, what we need to do to make the offense go or jail and, you know, runs more smoothly, I don't really have the answer. But it's not really, you know, for me to have the answer. Um, I'm just trying to go out there and play as hard as I can and, you know, keep my teammates rallied into it and make sure that we're all on the same page on both ends of the floor. As far as, like, um, you know, how the offense is moving right now. I don't really have an answer for that. Um, it's like I said, it's not really my job to really know, you know, the ins and outs of it. Early in the game, you know, we're just talking about the offense struggling, uh, but you kind of got going there in that second quarter and the third quarter and kind of held things together until other parts of the offense kind of started working and you guys were kind of able to pull up. Do you, do you go out with that mindset with, okay, 
we don't have bread. Um, things aren't necessarily clicking. Let me try to carry us until things do get operating a little bit better. Um, yes and no. Um, I don't think about caring um, at all. Uh, when I'm out there, I'm trying to just make the right basketball play while being aggressive at the same time. Um, you know, if, if someone's open, I, I try to look at that. And that's, that's the right play to make. Um, but, you know, when I have a chance to, you know, see the ball going once, whether getting to the free throw line or um, having a mismatch that I like, um, trying to attack and then trying to find that rhythm, um, like you kind of saw in the second half, uh, that's kind of, you know, how I process the game. So, What's the key to closing out a game like this? Yeah, I know you guys fought so hard and used so much energy to get back into it. Um, but, you know, things got a little bit out of whack during that last little bit of stretch. How do you guys change that? Yeah, um, you know, th this was this was, this was one of our better games in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, for us to just fight like that, uh, that's something that we haven't seen in, uh, you know, a couple of games. So, you know, being with that, obviously that's good. But uh, I think the last maybe four minutes, I think it was about the last four minutes, um, that we just kind of fell apart a little bit. Uh, you know, we didn't execute offensively. We had a couple of plays, um, you know, a couple of situations where we wanted to get uh, Grayson Allen in, in certain actions and we didn't. And then, um, you know, defensively, a couple offensive rebounds, a um, couple miss uh, rotations, you know, they hit dagger three. So, um, especially in the fourth quarter when you play a championship caliber team, um, you know, you have to be your P's and Q's. You have to be tight. And um, tonight they weren't in the last four minutes. So, appreciate you. Yeah. Gosh. Kyle, what elements from tonight do you hope uh, the team takes into tomorrow night in Philly? Man, I really loved. Uh, I really love playing with Denny and Rui out there. Uh, I think that's one thing that really, really looked well. Um, you know, we were able just to switch, uh, keep a body on Middleton, uh, keep a body on uh, Drew, and keep a body on Giannis, uh, just with size. Um, you know, I thought that was good for us. Um, hopefully, we can find a little cohesiveness, but you know, I think that was good. Um, I think, uh, you know, outside of the last, you know, couple of minutes defensively, how we competed, um, you know, in, in the third and, you know, half of the fourth, I thought that was great. And, um, you know, I think that's the main thing, you know, obviously defensively, you know, that's, that's kind of been really lost this year with us. And, um, you know, it was just, it just felt good to play, you know, team defense like that, you know, it, it looked good, felt good, so. Thank you. Chris. Hey, Kuz, uh, tonight TNT had you mic'd up, and there were a couple of times that they went to you talking about leadership and just kind of just showing guys, hey, listen, this is what I'm seeing. You know, one instance you were telling TV you like the way he shoots, you'd rather him take a shot than turn in a ball over. Can you just describe, is that how you've kind of been throughout the year communicating with the guys in real time? Uh, that one was actually, uh, I was talking to Denny. He threw the ball, I threw it to him in the, in the corner. Um, he didn't shoot it when he had a shot and he tried to hit TB, which was a good pass, good read, but, um, I thought it was a good shot, but, um, no, I mean, I, I just try to just lift my hand out there every time and I'm playing, if I see something, I say much, or I say something, um, you know, I'm not trying to overstep, overstep or, or do it you know, do the extra, but, you know, when I see something, I'm going to say something and, um, you know, just use my voice. You know, I've been in this league not that long, but I play with a lot of great players and I know how the, how the game is supposed to be played. And, um, you know, it's important in times like this, you know, when, when you have a, a team like us, we have, we're under a lot of distress right now, but, um, you know, if we could just help one another out, uh, it'd be, you know, a little bit easier, so. Appreciate it, Coos. Thanks. Last question, Anil. Coos, Coach was talking about just some of, you know, the important high leverage situations, you know, communication mistakes, both on offense and defense. How do you see those are, you know, those EV fixes to try and take moving forward or are there recurring themes that need to be cleaned up? Recurring themes that need to be cleaned up. 
um, but they're also easy fixes. Um, you know, the biggest thing that it takes is takes takes your mind. You know, you have to, you know, actively understand, you know, what's going on, what's wrong, and then, you know, trying to not make the mistake twice. Um, you know, that's cliche to, to say, but um, it's important when you're trying to win ball games, and you've seen it. You know, it's certain possessions. Um, you know, we let Grayson Allen or Content one and two, you know, come in and crash. You know, get off his <laughs> program. You know, those things they matter. Um, you know, you may not look at them and, um, you know, think it's a big thing, but, you know, it is a big thing. We're trying to win ball games. You know, every possession matters. And uh, it's all about just limiting the mistakes. And, um, you know, it's okay. You know, if you turn over the ball, that's fine. But if it's just the little things, you know, defensively, the rotations, um, you know, make sure you're screening, make sure you have the proper spacing for a teammate to, um, you know, have a decent look. You know, those things matter. And, those things they, they can't keep reoccurring, but um, at the same time, they're easy fixes. So 